Let's see. Now this is a Move SE. That is 1080p USB 3.0 HDMI and 3G SDI. And today we're going to be showing it connecting via IP. And then to the Hive, which isn't live yet. I saw people in the comments asking if the Hive is live. Not yet, but very soon you're going to get access to the beta and then we'll be launching very soon this year. So as soon as this camera connects to the network, so Tess is going to plug in the Ethernet cable, it's going to turn on. Um, it's just one power over Ethernet connection to the back. So Tess is going to plug that in and then it's going gonna, it's gonna to turn on. It's just that easy. Um, now, if, you, if your camera does not turn on when you plug it into the network, that means that you do not have a PoE network switch and you can use the included power supply. Since it's turning on just oh. with the Ethernet, we know we have PoE and we're good to go. Now, the next step is connecting to it via the web browser. And we've made this super easy. So Mike, if you go to my um, web browser input here, I'm just gonna type in ptzoptics.local forward slash. That's all you gotta do. You do not need to know the IP address of the camera anymore. So we've made it super, super easy. So in, what is this, less than two minutes, we've got the camera on the network and we've connected to it on um, we've connected to it through a web browser. There this is go. IP video right here. The default username and password is admin admin. And literally we have video PTZ control and the, we have connected to the camera in less than three minutes. Now, one of the things that I'm going to do is just double check a few things. I'm going to see, okay, here's the auto tracking. If we want to turn that on. Um, go into the video settings and I'm just checking it's set up to do 1080p at four megabits a second. Wonderful. I'm going to go to the network settings here and I'm going to set it to a fixed IP address. Uh, that is, what that means is that's a static IP address. So that means we can it, the IP address will not change. So I'm going to go ahead and hit apply and I'm going to apply and reboot the camera so that this camera's IP address is 192.168.21.247. And the reason why I wanna do that is because I would like to um, connect this camera to my SuperJoy. That's part of what we're trying to do here today. So 192.168.221 is the IP address of my SuperJoy. So now I'm gonna add this camera to my SuperJoy very simply and easily. I'll make it camera two. And I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And now I should be able to control this camera. There you go. Um, from the Super Joy. So now as I control the Super Joy left and right, you'll notice that the PTZ camera on the table is moving. So we literally have control over this camera with a joystick just want to double check to see if we have the latest firmware for this camera. Um, so what Why would we ever want to do that, Paul? When you go to system settings, you can click the check firmware button and, oh, look at this. There's new firmware. Yay! The new firmware for the Move SE enables NDI. That's right. So we'll go ahead and hit apply to download the firmware. And all we got to do is go into this firmware upload um, area here. Upload. So if you've recently bought a Move SE, the firmware adds NDI. If you haven't purchased an NDI license, you can now upgrade your firmware for the Move SE and get it for no cost. Yep, $0. You can get NDI for the Move SE now. All you got to do is upgrade to the latest firmware. That's now right. I'm going to click the, uh, I, I just had to, I had to hit the keep button for some reason on windows, but here uh -huh. we go. I'm going to hit apply. And essentially what's going to happen is this progress bar. We're just going to wait for that progress bar to finish. The camera is going to reboot itself and then you will have the latest firmware. And this is important because our engineers are constantly working to add new features into the cameras. Uh, this is no cost to you whatsoever. So now that this firmware update is done, Let's take a look and see what has changed. So 
let's double check something here. Uh, let's check for the firmware. See if we have the latest version. Our firmware is Yay. up to date. So it's all set. Now I wanted to show something though. Do you see this device ID here? The device ID says PTZ Optics. And what that means is, is that when you type in ptzoptics.local, this camera will show up. But what happens if you have two cameras that are both at ptzoptics.local? Then we have a problem. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this device ID to move SE winner, oh, because someone's go. gonna win this camera. And when I hit apply, I'm gonna need to reboot the camera. This camera's getting a lot of reboots here. Um, but once I reboot it, it won't show up under ptzoptics.local. It'll show up under move SE winner dot local that's awesome because you can't have like two three four cameras all on the same ip system like this so we're going to reboot it one last time i'm going to bring it up with its new address and i think this is a really interesting learning experience for everyone when we do this so you'll see what happens how to set up a multi-camera system without having to know any ip addresses at all so now we'll go ahead and hit this again now we might need, up oh, there it is. Boom, now I just typed in move se winner dot local into the bar and it will pull up, it will pull up this camera. So just to give you guys an idea of how that works. If you don't mind, I think it might make sense to uh, review what we just did in our PowerPoint because IP video is a really powerful um, new shift that not only can save you a lot of money as you're building and designing uh, video systems, but check out what we just did. It was so straightforward. We unboxed the camera. <laughs> we connected it to the network. We didn't even need to know the IP address. We just typed in ptzoptics.local forward slash and boom, we hit the camera. And since we were connected to the camera over the web browser, I just changed it from DHCP, which is uh, basically a system that automatically gives an IP address to the camera. And I set it to a fixed IP address because I wanted to know exactly what the IP address is so that I can type it into the IP joystick. So I typed that into the SuperJoy and then we showed controlling the camera over an IP joystick. So both of these devices, the camera and the SuperJoy, are just connected to a single Ethernet cable for power and connectivity.